Welcome to Ingrid's World. I'm your host, Ingrid paris Hicklin, and on this show, you will meet Ellen Kershaw, correspondent on Ingrid's World. She will tell us about her experience attending the opening and then visiting the National Museum of African American History and Culture, located in Washington, D.C. Then we'll speak one-on-one -on -one with Anya Wheeler, Ingrid's World Teen Correspondent. She will share her perspective on student leadership and high school. We also have a chance to speak to and listen to our youth reporters, Alyssa Hicklin and Isis Wallace, and their thoughts on gifts. Our last guests are animators, Travell Coleman and Tyler Coleman, who launched their company, Travell and Villamatic Animation, on YouTube in September of 2015. They will tell us about their animation and how they create characters. So let's get started with this great show that has something for everyone. So welcome to the show, Evelyn. Good to have you. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. Well, you Appreciate just it. have been someplace very special. Yes, I'd have to agree with you. It was very special. So tell us about the history of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. Well, the, the history of the museum actually goes back for quite a few years, over a hundred years. In fact, it was back at the end of the Civil War in 1865 when the troops were honored with a march back then. But at that time, uh, there was no black regiments mm -hmm. that were included in that despite their uh, contribution to preserving the Union. Wow. And so it ended up about 50 years later, in about 1915, when the community got together in Washington, D.C. to honor these uh, military, the black military. And, wow. um, and it's, it started back then when people felt there was a need to have a museum mm -hmm. or a monument. And several bills were put forth at that time. And it continued on for many, many years. And um, it's really a tale of false starts, disingenuous efforts, gridlock, <laughs> <laughs> and also unexpected alliances. In fact, you may be surprised to learn that uh, former President George W. Bush signed the 20, 2003 mm -hmm. legislation mm -hmm. authorizing the creation of the museum in the nation's capital right on the monument grounds. So let's start right there. This is a photograph of you and Lonnie Bunch. Now, who's Lonnie Bunch? He is the founding director wow. of the museum. Very personable, and yes, I got a chance to meet him. And actually, um, he met lots of people the, at the opening. So tell us, about you were at the opening? Yes. Oh my gosh. The opening. Tell us about it that. Was, now that was really amazing. Uh huh. Um, really, it was people from all walks of life that came, many crowds. <laughs> it was a beautiful fall day. It was in on September 25th um, and in 2016, and just lots of people from all over. The dedication mm -hmm. featured speeches mm -hmm. by President Obama and uh, U.S. Representative uh, John Lewis, former President George W. Bush, uh -huh. and Lonnie B Bunch. So let me just ask you one thing. You, there's a couple pictures that we're showing, and you're standing in front of Chuck Berry's. Now, yes. what's that about? <laughs> Well, I kind of had a personal connection to it. You know, many times when you go to museums, uh -huh. it's things of our ancestors that are really highlighted. Right. But I could really relate to a lot of things in the museum. Wow. And that was one of them. It, it, I remember way back when. <laughs> well, yes. so now you attended the opening and then you went inside the museum. Oh, yes. How did you feel when you walked inside that museum? What was your... Impression. Really, it was, I think, 
President Obama said it when he said, welcome home. <gasps> That's what it felt like because I could relate to a lot of things yes. that was in there. Right. You mentioned standing next to Chuck Berry's car. Well, I re remember standing next to Ruby D and Ozzy Davis picture. We have a picture, so our viewers are going to have a chance to see you standing right there beside that. Well, that had something very special for me. I can remember when my mom and I used to watch mm. their movies together, mm. and then later on, my daughters and I could watch them in the movies, and mm. so that had a real close connection for me. Um, that and a lot of other little things. I haven't quite figured out what is the favorite uh -huh, uh -huh. because um, if you get a chance to go and you do all the walking, actually you might want to stop and go to the cafe. Oh. There's a 400 seat cafe Ooh. in the basement and they have this these recipes that have been passed down from generation to generation. Now, yes. we also have a picture of the May Reeves exhibit. The hat, What's that about? The hat lady. You know I love hats. I know. Our and viewers don't know that, but <laughs> Evelyn's known for her hats. Well, um, I really like that display. You can actually go into their, the museum shop mm -hmm. and shop some little items in that respect and then go in other parts of the museum and there the hats are on display. They're on display. She is amazing. Oh my gosh. They were beautiful. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Goodness. My mom, my aunts, my grandparents, they would always go to church with hats and gloves and pearls on. How can we bring that back? Oh. <laughs> I don't know how we can do that. Um, I do try to encourage my girls, because I have daughters, okay. to get your hats on, get your gloves out when uh -huh. they're special occasions. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Makes you feel special. It does. And I, t mm -hmm. I tell you, so you don't have a favorite exhibit, but I also saw you standing beside, you took a picture of standing beside the Lynx exhibit. Oh, What's yes. that about? I thought that was really fantastic that some of the organizations that work in our community mm -hmm. to um, help those uh, also uh, support the museum mm -hmm. and they were listed there and so I thought that was very nice because there are organizations like Jack and Jill of America Incorporated. Wow. The Lynx Foundation, you know, there's on the wall the support that they've given for this museum. Wow. So that was very, very touching because I know people that continue to work with organizations like that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know that you, you probably were awestruck when you walked in there. What kind of, let's say, okay, if people are visiting, where do you suggest they go first to see? Um, but I, I think now we have to really think about this because it's over 85,000 square feet Ooh. of exhibit space. Oh my gosh. Nearly 3,000 objects. Oh wow. 12 exhibitions and 13 different interactives with 17 stations. Wow. 183 videos. <gasps> They're housed on five floors. And so there's quite a bit to see. It really depends on the person. Mm. What connection they have and where they'd like to start out. Mm -hmm. All of them I found so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, some of the interactive, you can join in on a step show. No way. What museum can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> step show? Yes. I've always yes. wanted to do that. There's a research room where you can actually go in and research your ancestors. Really? Isn't that amazing? So I can go there and I can really look up my ancestors? Yes, you can. Wow. Isn't that I amazing? I mean, because I know that's particularly a, a, an interest of yours, too. Yes. And so now we actually have a museum that's dedicated to that. So you can see how you could spend 
hours basically in this museum when you go. So I would suggest if you're going to visit that you do plan to stay a while, see what's there, and perhaps mm. make one or two more visits mm -hmm. to get around to everything. It's quite enormous. So, so don't plan, that. don't think that you're going to see everything in this one visit. I would not advise it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you know, what a celebration. So, so if a person's watching this show and they said, you know what, I really like to get there to the museum, what's the process? You know, how do, how do I get to go to the museum? Well, actually, there are tickets available oh, now. Okay. But okay. if you're in, you if you're ticket? with a nonprofit organization, including a school or student or religious and com co uh, community-based groups of ten or more, yes, there is a number you can call and schedule a visit. Oh, you're kidding me. Yes. Would you like for me to give you that Please, number? Please, our viewers want All that. All right, you can call the Customer Support Center at 1-866-297-4020. And there are additional numbers listed on the website. So you can ask questions about touring. You can listen. There's a, um, a mobile app where you can listen to people who have already visited and have a connection oh and would like to talk about their experience. Oh my goodness. So you get to learn so much about it and you can actually set up your own personal tour. You can set up your own personal tour. With 10 or more. Okay, with 10 or more. <laughs> yes. Wow, I mean, and, and what a wonderful way. I, the museum, it sounds like very well thought out, something for everyone. Um, uh, it, it really does seem um, as if there is something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone may not want to start. Uh, I think it's got three levels below, and when you start on the lowest level, there's the, this gigantic steel bowl mm -hmm. that people can see that was used back when uh, right. rice was harvested. Uh, well, we're about ready to run out of time, mm -hmm. but I just can't get over how you're telling us all about this museum. So, Evelyn, well, I enjoyed you just, it. Like, okay, so we stopped at the part where she was telling us about the rice. You've got to go to the museum and figure out what was the next part of the story. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because the whole, the whole message is brought forth through that uh, exhibit. So, well, thank you so much for being on the show. You're amazing. Oh, wow. Thank, thank you pleasure. so much. Mm -hmm. That was amazing, and it's going to be my new destination for culture and history. Coming up next, we'll be talking with Anya Wheeler, Ingrid's World Teen Correspondent. Well, Anya, thank you so much for being Hi, on the show. Thanks, thank you for having me. Well, I'm glad that you're here because primarily, I mean, you have just been from the very beginning a, a reporter on this <laughs> show. So you've been very successful in high school. I first want to first start with you about student leadership. Tell us about what you're doing in your high school. Okay, so I was selected to be a part of the Student Activity Leadership Council and it's basically when we learn how to be leaders throughout the school year and as we're learning how to be leaders we also plan prom, homecoming, all of those fun events, Sadie Hawkins, every dance and school event and even you know the football schedule we're all in charge of that so we're learning how to be leaders and leading at the same time. What made you want to do that? Oh well I have these two amazing mentors that I've known since my freshman year and they really inspired me to want to do it. Um, Mike Viola and uh, Mrs. Bristow, they're both amazing people. Oh my so goodness, yeah, they so they inspired you. So in high school, you're fairly active. Mm -hmm. What organizations have you joined? I'm a part of the student council. I'm the fundraising captain. I'm also in National Honor Society and I've done four years of the CFPA program. What? Now, what does that stand um, for? Center for Fine and Performing Arts. So, well, we have to talk a little bit about that because I have seen some of your plays. Now, 
you've been performing since the very beginning of high school? Um, yes, I auditioned to go, be in the school. My goodness, so what mm -hmm. was your first play? My first play was, it was a, a little comedy, it was um, Law and Order, a fairy tale unit, and it was about like fairy tale characters in a Law and Order setting. It was really funny. And oh I, my goodness. And I played one of the three little pigs. And <laughs> you played one of the three little pigs, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, and what other plays have you been in? I've been in, oh, a lot of plays, I can't name them all, but I've been in um, It's a Wonderful Life, Bye Bye Birdie, Shrek, Beauty and the Beast, um, A Streetcar Named Desire, and another, uh, and an act, like a, like a little one act, it was really, yes. Yeah. So I have to, what has been the key to your success in high school? Um, I think sleep. I think sleep, <laughs> because I feel like if I don't get enough rest, then I won't like have the energy to do things uh -huh. so I try to go to bed early and it's everyone's like oh you go to bed so early but I'm like I get things done if I yeah so you get sleep yeah I get sleep I mean something so important like that and mm -hmm. that makes such good sense yeah so how many hours do you sleep I try to get I would like to get eight hours but I usually get around like six or seven seven is the my best Six is my worst, eight is like great. Optimum, wow. Yeah. Kudos to you, oh my goodness. So um, college will be coming up soon mm. for you. Will you be pursuing acting in college? Um, not as a career, but I will do it as a hobby. Absolutely, wow. I'll audition for shows. And have you started thinking about a career choice? Um, yes, I want to go into business, marketing, and um, maybe journalism. Ooh. Yes, maybe as like a side or a minor or something like that. Wow. Well, congratulations, Anya Wheeler, and thank you for being a team reporter here on Ingrid's World. Um, you have made every show special oh, thank thanks you. to your hard work. Oh, thank you. Best thank you of everything. Me, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Coming up next, we'll be talking with Alyssa Hicklin and Isis Wallace. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Well, welcome to the show, Isis Wallace. Hey. Hi. And Alyssa Hicklin. Well, you know, this show is the holiday show, and we're talking about gifts. So I want to know about gifts. What, what gift would you like to give? Um, I would really like an iPhone 6 right now. Oh, that's what you want to get. <laughs> oh, okay. What kind of gift would you like to give? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll let you think about, a little bit about it. What would you like to give? I would like to give the gift of love. <gasps> Oh, that's so cool. Because it's priceless. This is because it's priceless. Now, what would you like to give, Alyssa? Um, the same as Isis and also some canned food. And canned food, really nice. Okay, of course food is very important because actually during um, the holiday season, a lot of um, things are given, and particularly it's food and particularly clothing, so it's very important. Um, what would be, we know that, um, you know, we'll be getting lots of gifts and we're very fortunate, but you said you like to give the gift of love and you like to give, is there anything else that you would like to give this world? Mm, um, clothes. Mm-hmm, and one clothes. Mm. Thing, um, things that actually to do during the winter time, like a shelter. Money. Mm. And money. So it looks like you really all are, are very focused on that. Now, I want you to think back and remember, how, what, have you ever gotten a gift that you were so surprised and you never knew, you were so shocked? Yes. You did, okay. So I want you to remember what that's like and just tell me the one adjective when you got it, how did you feel? Surprise. Surprise. Amazed. Amazed. So I think that that's what's important is that when you think about giving gifts to people, what do you want them to feel? Surprise. Surprise. And amazed. And amazed. And both of you are not only wonderful, but you actually are amazing, both of you. Thank you for being on the show, Alyssa. Hicklin and Isis Wallace. It's a pleasure to 
and listen to your perspective on what gifts are about. Coming up next, we're going to be talking with Travell Coleman and Tyler Coleman. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Well, welcome to the show, Travell and Tyler Coleman. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Well, this is about animation, so how did you start animating? Well, I started animating when I was about nine, and I started animating when I was at my house, and I was and I was so bored, so I just started to, you know, put some pictures together on my 3DS. So. Once I started to do that, it started to piece together, and I and I just started to animate. Oh my goodness! And Travell, what about you? I think we started at the same time, but his is much more better than mine, and then we evolved into like a better animator as we grew up because we started making YouTube videos, and we we, we thought this was going to be our cool careers that we work, would work on. Wonderful. And so what inspired you to start animation? Well, basically what inspired me was the things on YouTube I've seen, like like animation on YouTube, how good the quality is on it. And I that really inspired me to do my best on animation. And I wanted I really want to get the point out that I want to entertain people. Ah, excellent, excellent. And Travel, what about yourself? Well, when I saw other people's animation it, it just really want. I just really wanted to make my own because it looks so good, and it just inspired me a lot. In that, I really wanted to make one of my own. Yeah. Wow, good answer. Now, um, how long does it take to do an animation? Well, for us, because mm -hmm. of our software, um, it takes about an hour to do one of our animations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. And um, let me ask you. What kind of career are you interested in? Um, the career I'm interested in is animation and game making. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Tyler, what about you? I'm interested in software designing and animation as well. Animation as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to see the, your latest video that uh, we're going to show there. And can you tell us a little bit about, about the video we're going to watch? Well. The video we're going to watch is about what exactly is on the channel or what's going to happen in the near future. Ah, so it's like a preview? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so everyone stay right there and watch these wonderful young people create this fantastic, they have created this fantastic video. Um, both of you are amazing, and all I have to say is watch out, Disney, because Tyler Travel and Villamatic Animation are on the move, for sure. <laughs> Good job.
I would like to thank Evelyn Kershaw, Anya Wheeler, Isis Wallace, and Alyssa Hicklin, Travell Coleman, Tyler Coleman, for being exceptional guests. Our quote this time is really from remarks from President Obama at the dedication of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. So hopefully, this museum can help us talk to each other. More importantly, listen to each other. And most importantly, see each other. Black, white, Latino, Native American, Asian American, and see how our stories are bound together. Thank you for watching Ingrid's World, and don't forget, friend us on Facebook or follow us on Ingrid's World VA and Twitter, or Instagram for Ingrid World Instant News. So stay in touch and be a blessing to someone today.